Welcome to the Loving Truth Podcast, where it's all about finding clarity, confidence, and peace in the face of marriage challenges. And now your host, relationship expert and certified master life coach, Sharon Pope. Hello loves, this is Sharon Pope, and this is The Loving Truth. Today we're going to talk about how technology has made relationships more difficult. There are many ways that technology has negatively impacted our relationships and made them more difficult. It might be easier to just have a conversation about the ways in which technology has benefited relationships, but I can think of two, two ways that technology has helped relationships. The first is that I can meet a lot of people through technology, through the use of technology that I wouldn't have had access to before. So dating websites, they allow us access to people literally around the world. Where before we had the dating websites, we were pretty limited in terms of who we could meet and decide to couple up with. We were limited by who we worked with, who we knew, who we live near, who our friends knew, right? That was pretty much the limitation. Now we could meet someone on the other side of the world and decide to spend the rest of our lives with them. And that wasn't possible before. Now there are downfalls that come with that, like, you know, trying to find someone online can feel like a part-time job sometimes. And the way in which we're getting to know each other feels very impersonal, feels like a job interview almost right? Because we already know so much about them from their profile and we think we know who they are. And then we have this sort of checklist in our mind. So the kinds of questions that we're asking them are very much related to, are they checking the box in my mental inventory or not? As opposed to just organically discovering who is this person sitting in front of me. So that has its own challenges. But certainly we have access to meeting more people more quickly. Another way that technology has helped relationships is that you have access to so much information now. Think about it. You can listen to a podcast with the touch of a button and get information about how to create and sustain better relationships. That wasn't available a decade or two ago. Um, You can download a book or you can download a course and within like 60 seconds, it's in your inbox. I mean, that is if it isn't sent to junk or your client, your email client doesn't block it, whatever. But it can be in your inbox in like a minute or two minutes. And that's amazing. I can help and support people literally all over the world, living tens of thousands of miles away just through a video connection. So they, you have access, they have access to experts all over the world. And I think that that has to be a benefit as opposed to just who's the therapist that's close to me and then driving to their office every week. That was very limiting. Now you have so many more options and you have access to so much more information than you ever did before. So those are two ways that I think technology has helped us in terms of our relationships. But now let's talk about how technology has made it so much harder, particularly in our long-term committed relationships. So look, first of all, technology is not going anywhere, right? So these challenges that we're facing, they're only going to get worse. So that's why I want you to be aware of them now. I don't want you to just blindly hop along and then fall into the trap and then wonder how the heck did I get here? I want you to have the information now so that you can make really conscious choices for yourself. And if there's a way to do it differently, and there always is, then I want you to have that information as well. So let's get started. The first way that technology has made it much more challenging to have healthy, connected relationships is that 7% of what we are communicating, I'm gonna say that again, 7% of what we're communicating with someone comes through the words that we use. The rest of it comes through the tone of your voice, the speed at which you're speaking, which both of those come, they originate from how fast your heart rate is and the rate of your breathing, right? If your heart rate is beating really fast, if you're sort of going into fight or flight, you're probably going to speak more quickly. 
and you're probably going to elevate the tone and loudness of your voice. Um, so the tone changes and all that kind of stuff. Also, your facial expressions, your body language, like these are all things that contribute the other 93% of what is trying to be communicated. Where does this show up? It's when we're having important conversations with our partner and we're doing it through text. Now I get that it feels safer to have those difficult conversations through a text message than sitting down with our partners. I get it, but that doesn't mean it works. It doesn't. Text is great for, did you pick up the peanut butter on the way home, babe? Like that's great. It is not good for sharing your feelings and wanting to be understood, particularly about a touchy or challenging subject between you and your beloved. Right? Say, getting in, into a marriage and saying, I will love you for the rest of my life, that is a very adult decision. And my friends, we got to show up as adults to that, which means we need to have difficult conversations, challenging conversations, important conversations with our spouse, sitting with them. Because when we try to do it through text, at best case scenario, we've got a 7% chance of actually communicating what it is that we're trying to communicate at best, because you have no control over what's happening and the context around your partner when they receive that text message and when they read it. So give yourself an opportunity to be successful and stop having important conversations through text. I know you're gonna resist it. I just want you to be successful. And I worry about our younger generation. Like they do everything through DMs and texts and all everything's electronic. And yet every marriage goes through some real shit. And how are they going to be able to sit down and have those conversations? Or are they just going to rely on communicating the same way they do for everything? And they won't be successful. So take that into consideration. The second way that technology is not helping us is that even though we are more connected to one another than we've ever been before, we are also more lonely than we've ever been before. And that's because we're not sitting down and having the face-to-face -face human interaction or even the telephone calls that we used to have. And that means a lot gets lost in the story, right? In the, in the little IKRs, in the, in the little, like in a text message or a DM, we shorten everything that we're trying to say. And sometimes it needs a few more words to really be understood or to share what's on our hearts and minds. And so it's not unusual that I will, you know, ask one of my clients like, Hey, if I was a fly on the wall in your house tonight, what would I see? And they describe something for me that sounds like we're all in separate rooms watching whatever it is we want to watch on different devices. Like, no wonder we're lonely. Of course we're lonely. We're not spending time together. Now, the third way that technology is not helping us, and you will get this right away. I'm sure I've done a whole podcast episode just on this topic because it's so important, is that even when we're with someone, we're not really with them, are we? All right? We got our nose in our phone. We're scrolling through social media. We're looking at our emails. We're responding to this. We're laughing at that. We're clicking emojis. We're not really with them. We have lost the art of presence. And relationships, to cultivate and nurture healthy, connected relationships, you have to be present for that. You don't get to phone that in. <laughs> Pardon the pun. Right? And, and no matter who is sitting across from you, I don't care if it is your friend, if it's your mother, if it's your child, or if it's your lover or your partner, if you're in your phone while you're sitting across from someone else, what you are communicating to them is that what is in here in my phone is so much more important than you. And so if that is not what you want to communicate, then you need to put your phone down when you are with someone. Whatever is going on in there, cannot be more exciting than your own life. And if it's true that it is more exciting to you, then that's because you're not paying enough close attention to what's happening in your own life. You're over here in everybody else's business. 
So you need to put the phone down when you're with someone. It's important. We got to get back to a place of really engaging and interacting because that's what's necessary to build and nurture relationships. Another way that technology is hurting us, and this is my own personal pet peeve, but it's this expectation of immediacy that has now become like normalized. Let me give you an example. Let's say that after your second child was born, you and your spouse started to become really disconnected. And over the last 10 years, it's only worsened. And you don't talk very much and you're not having sex anymore and you just feel super disconnected and you don't know how to solve those challenges. But lots of people think that can be solved in three easy steps in 30 days. Look, that is not a thing. That is not a real thing, but we think it is because we can get dinner delivered to our doorstep in 20 minutes. So why can't we solve 10 years of marital issues in 10 minutes? <laughs> Look, even if you've been there and it's taken you 10 years to get to this place of where now you're questioning your marriage and now you're trying to figure out how to solve these challenges or if they can be solved, doesn't mean it's going to take you 10 years to do that, but it's certainly going to take more than 10 minutes. So we've got to set you up for success. But if you go into it thinking, well, if it's not three easy steps in 30 days, well, then I don't want to do it. Then we assume that nothing will ever work. And the only answer is to end it. And we make lifelong choices that impact our families for generations, all because of this thought that everything in our lives should be good, quick, cheap, and easy. And relationship challenges, my friends, are going to require something of you, right? They're going to require some time, some energy, potentially some money, some discomfort, right? There's no path to overcome relationship challenges where you get to stay in your comfort zone. That's not a thing. So we've got to get realistic about how to overcome relationship challenges that are inevitably going to show up in almost every single marriage, right? And this idea that everything should be as quick and easy as a Chinese dinner being delivered to our doorstep, that's not a thing. So get that out of your mind, rethink it. It's available to you in other areas of your life. It's not available to you when it comes to overcoming challenges in your relationship, okay? The next one is the comparison game on social media. We all go onto social media and we compare the snippets of other people's lives with the totality of our lives. And that impacts how we feel about ourselves, but it also impacts how we feel about our marriages, right? We see somebody else's marriage and we see that little snippet and then we compare that to our marriage. And then we feel bad about our life. We might feel bad about ourselves. We feel bad about our marriage. And if we feel bad about our life and we feel bad about ourselves, my friends, that impacts how we show up to the marriage. It impacts whether or not we're going to set healthy and loving boundaries for ourselves. If we don't feel good about ourselves, we're not going to do that. We're not going to express our needs and know that our needs are valuable and important, right? We're just going to shut down and we're going to avoid those conversations. And then we're going to go back into our isolation and hide behind DMs and texts and all the things. And then we're going to feel incredibly lonely. And then we're going to blame our partners for how lonely we feel. So there's that. And maybe the last thing, and this is sort of a new thing as some elements of our society are changing. And here's the two changes that I see happening in our society that's, that are driven by technology, but then are manifesting also in our relationships is this idea of increased polarization that we are feeling between ourselves and everybody else in our lives. The other is this idea of being very self-interested. So I'll talk about the polarization first. So when we become more polarized, we become less interested in the nuances of other people, why they think what they think, how they came to those conclusions. And it really deepens our need to be right. Well, in marriage, if you need to be right, you need to therefore make your partner wrong. And that is not fertile ground 
for a loving, connected marriage. If you need to always make your partner wrong. And my friends, just because someone doesn't see the world the same way you do, doesn't mean they're wrong. It means their life experience has led them to different conclusions. That's all that's happening. But this polarization actually impacts us physically because it heightens the fight, flight, or freeze response in our central nervous system. We literally think we are under attack. So we either come at it fighting or we completely shut down to our partners. And we're like, we can't possibly love them because they see things very differently than, than I do. And I'm right. So we get tied to this idea of being right. And as we become more and more self-focused, which we do, right? What we care about is what is impacting us. Like, yeah, yeah, yeah. I care about like making sure the planet is around in a thousand years, but mostly I care about the $10 bill that I have to pay every single month for recycling. That doesn't work for me, right? So we get very self-focused. The way that manifests in our relationships is that we're super focused on our needs. We're less focused on making sure our partner is getting their needs met. Right? Like I talk to women all day long who will tell me about how their needs aren't getting met in their marriage, and we need to address that for sure. But when I start talking to them about what are you actively doing to make sure that your partner's needs are getting met, most of the time they don't even know what their partner's needs are. And they're not making a concerted effort to make sure that, that their partner's needs are getting met. It's not that they're uninterested in that, but they're way more interested in making sure that their needs are getting met. So we are just becoming more and more self-focused and self-interested, and that's the way of it. And it, there's nothing wrong with it necessarily, but I think we've just got to become more conscious to how that's impacting the ways in which we show up when we are a couple, when we're a partnership, because you're not going to agree on everything and you're not going to see the world the same way because you didn't have the same life experience growing up. You come to different conclusions. And so these are the things that are that technology is sort of allowing and sort of leading, but it's leading to really increased challenges inside of our marriages. And I think marriage is hard enough to do without the advent of all these other things. So the good news here, my friends, is that you have free will, right? You can make a different choice at any moment. Like the, the phone companies, they are not incented on getting you off that phone. They want you on the phone. They want you on the platform. But you can make different choices, right? You can say, when I'm out to dinner with my partner, my phone is on the table, turned over, where I don't even see the text messages or whatever that's popping up, or it's in my purse or whatever. I can make sure that if there's an important conversation I need to have with my partner, I'm not gonna do it through text. I'm gonna set up a time where we can speak to one another from the heart so that we can really understand one another. I'm going to make sure I don't isolate behind a screen. And I'm going to go downstairs and sit with my partner and be like, hey, what are you watching? Can I watch it with you? I'm going to spend time with them, even if I don't want to watch what they're watching. right? But these are the things that if we do them, then technology isn't having a negative impact on our relationships. But you got to be in charge of that. You can't leave the phone companies now in charge of your marriage. Okay, That's not going to work out well for you. So technology is a beautiful thing. I love it when it works. I hate it when it doesn't, <laughs> but we've got to be conscious to all the impacts of technology. And when it comes to relationships, it, it, it doesn't always go together very well. So I want you to have the information so that you can make choices for yourself. Inevitably, there will be some time when you are going to need to choose what is more important, my phone right now or my partner. I think the choice should be really, really obvious, but our actions might prove otherwise. So just be aware, be aware and start slowly just to make some different choices for yourself and see how that impacts, right? It may not solve all the relationship problems, but at least it's not going to create a whole bunch of new problems for you. All right. I hope that that is helpful for you. And until next time, please take really good care 
If you're listening to this podcast because you're struggling to decide whether to stay or go in your marriage, and you're serious about finding that answer, it's time to book a Truth and Clarity session with a member of my team. On the call, we'll discuss where you are in your marriage and explore if there's a fit for you and I to work together so you can make and execute the right decision for you and your marriage. Go to clarityformymarriage.com to fill out an application now. That's clarityformymarriage.com.